66 degrees outside the window on 8th Street, 92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5, streaming audio and video live on RTC Channel 4, which means we turn to the left and say good morning to Scott. Good morning, sir. Scott, back in the studio today. And of Record course, week for us. Wasn't yes, it? I think so. We've been busy, haven't we? We have. And if you have a smartphone or an Android device, you can download the TuneIn Radio app, take us wherever you happen to be going, which today would be the First Federal Savings Bank, where you can say good morning to Mr. Dick Belcher. Uh, good morning. You can't say good morning to Jim Snyder, though. No. No, that's, no, no, no not going to happen. Is well, there some reason for that? <laughs> <laughs> At the bank. At the uh, bank. At the yeah, bank. That's, that's right. right. That's there right. we go. Let's well, clarify we're gonna, that. <laughs> we're going to honor Jim today. Uh, been around 39 years, and uh, anybody that stays around 39 years. <laughs> Deserves to have their own radio uh, show. They deserve to get to be on the radio show and TV. That's right. Okay. Exactly. Memorial Day. Yeah. Coming up. Coming Mo up. Memorial Day is a day to give thanks to the people who fought for the things we have. Exactly. Well gonna said. Going to be 80 again today. Yeah. Another nice yeah. day in store. Yeah. Nice weekend coming up. Exactly. Farmers are loving it. Oh, I'll bet. Yeah. They're winding down. Mm -hmm. They're pl they're planning to. <clears throat> beginning of summer okay now what do you think of uh, the governor wannabe Greg's uh, selection of Christina Hale as a running mate I thought it was pretty savvy politically mm -hmm. he's gonna draw in that Marion County people and uh, that's where he has been a little short so far yeah yeah north side right they said she's from Michigan City yeah. At age 19, she was a single mom. Yeah, she is. Uh, she's a good success story. She really yeah, is. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to have uh, television for the race. Yes, we at are. At Indy. Yes. Yes, indeed. On the hundred. Hundredth. Right. Okay. Now you're going to be carrying all this. We'll have it. What time you start? Ten o'clock Sunday morning. Okay. There's a lot of pre-race festivities that are going to be and broadcast. It, and actually, it starts at one. I think that's right, yeah. yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. President is visiting Hiroshima he is. today. Right. Dropped that atomic bomb. Yeah. 140,000 killed in that. Didn't count those that remain. Now, to give you an idea of uh, that number, for instance, I checked on that in World War One, we only lost 11,000. In the Korean, we lost 33,000. In Vietnam, 58,000. Right. The big war, war uh, uh, World War II, 400,000. Right. So we dropped one bomb, and that's 140,000. And that's just at the, the Hiroshima site, right. right? Three days later, they right. dropped another Nagasaki. One. And uh, that's when the Japanese said, wait a minute. Yeah, that's enough. But that's what President Truman said at the time. He says, I just want to end the war. Yeah. And that's the only way I can do it. Well, it ended the war. Yeah. They uh, they came out with a white flag. Okay, a uh, little trivia. This okay. On, uh, did you know that Congress passed a law in the year 2000 that calls on Americans to pause for a moment in remembrance of Memorial Day? What time of the day is this supposed to happen? Is it 11 a.m., 3 p.m., or 5 p.m.? Wow, well, Scott's working on that right now, though. All right. He'll have that for us at the end of the program. He's pretty bright. He comes up with this stuff. Okay, I know. <laughs> he went to that other school. Down there. He, he's that was one a little south he's of Lafayette, smart. right? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, no, no, a little more trivia. Okay. How many loan committee meetings has Jim Snyder set through? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a multiple choice with yes. that? Okay, good. 1,000, 2,000, or 3,000. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> all very exciting, weren't they, Jim? Yeah, they were all exciting. <laughs> <laughs> we never made a bad loan. Never. Some, no. some went bad. But <laughs> at, at the time we made those loans, they were all good. All right? of them. Every one of them. You bet. Okay, well, there's a lot of college basketball players that was testing for the NBA. Right. And they tested the waters, and uh, only a few jumped in. Uh, Troy Williams from IU is going. Mm -hmm. uh, Blackman is staying. Right. 
and at Purdue, uh, Swanigan and Edwards is staying. Yeah, so that's good for Purdue. Yeah, that's really good for Purdue. Baylor, they <laughs> have they have some issues. Baylor they do football have some issues. coach and the president of right. uh, and the athletic director. I think they're all in trouble. They've been uh, fired or relieved right. or something. Has to do with not following up. Yeah, on not reporting incidents that they should have reported. Yeah, and and Ken Starr is the president. Right. All right, now you were telling me before we went on the air about Ken Starr. Tell, tell the public out there. Well, he was the lead. Who is he? According to Barron, too, he was the lead prosecutor against uh, Bill Clinton back in the days of the Whitewater affair and the Mono Lu Monica Lewinsky stuff and all that thing going on at that time. He should know better. Well, I would think so, yeah. Okay, the president so. of Baylor, so they're looking for a new, some new... New leadership. New leadership, I guess so. Okay, uh, some great news uh, about the city pool. It'll be uh, opening tomorrow at yeah. 11 o'clock. Always good. Yeah, annual Optimus Club Memorial Day breakfast is Monday, May 30th. 7 to 11. They, uh, at the fairgrounds. They do that well, well yeah. South the Forage Fairgrounds yep. out there. See your friends and neighbors. You bet. Fulton County Forage Equestrian Center hosts the Memorial Open Show, sponsored by Indiana Appalachian Association. Starts at 9 a.m. Saturday. That'll and be a Sunday. great show. It'll be a great show. All this is all breed show. Okay. St. Joe Altar and Rosary Society will have a garage sale eight to four today and eight to noon tomorrow at St. Joe Parish Hall. Rochester Dairy Queen donates 10% of sales from uh, 4 p.m. to closing on May 31st to the Black Top Cruisers. Okay. Anyone interested in showing support for the extension of the Nickel Plate Trail is encouraged to meet at 1015 today at the Nickel Plate Trail gazebo. DNR representatives will be there, and Terry Lee and others. Yeah, I'd like to show good support for that because they want to extend that trail all the way down here to 8th Street. So that's, that's part of yeah. trying to get the funding to get that done. And by the way, that gazebo, for folks who don't know, is right out across from Winfield Crossing. That's right. Right. Which is right next to Hart Shafter Marks. So the old Hart Shafter Marks yeah. building, yes. Some people know where that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, milestone uh, Joan Steele, wife of Judge Steele, passed away at age 67. Uh, Gary McMillan, former drama teacher at Rochester High School, died at 76. Uh, Gary did a lot for drama and, and uh, worked with uh, groups here in town and uh, for years and years. Uh, our condolences to those families. You bet. Okay, some flowers. I'm ready. We got flowers around in the in the uh, on Main Street mm -hmm. now and Ninth Street. Uh, the petunias. That's that's good. They look nice. Yeah, I noticed the water department was wa or oh, yeah. it was watering then this morning. Well, Street that makes department. sense. Oh, yeah, they are. <laughs> 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 no, well, you got to have a department to water the fl flowers. Let's use the water department, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've lost it, Scott. Mm, too early yeah, in the morning. I've lost it. It's a holiday weekend. <laughs> I've lost it. Quiet, Scott. <laughs> Riddle Elementary School te uh, students collected 150 canned foods for the Fulton County United Ministry Food Pantry in conjunction with their box stop for education pro uh, program participating students earn a swimming party. Excellent. A pergola at the Community Resource Center was built by volunteer Dave Stahlwasser and dedicated recently to the late Betty Becker. Betty Becker worked at the library for years and years. Fulton County Chamber of Commerce presented the Shining Star Award to the Citizens Action Committee. The Citizens Action Committee founded by Val Pepperton who's age 90 plus. Yes. Uh, in March of 15, took a serious problem to combat methamphetamine. Meth right. Woo. Say that for me. Methamphetamines. Yeah. Okay. Uh, manufactured and abused in Fulton County. 
congratulations to Team Pride Athletics, uh, Mike Barnett. And yeah, I got their new location up and running. You bet. Get, uh, it's a great asset for our community. It is. And uh, they sell a lot of uh, athletic shirts and garb around. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Right, Shannon? Right. Okay. Right. We have a special going for high school graduates. Today's the last day of school. Okay, here that's right. Graduation is next Friday. Week from today. Yeah. It's okay, so when Grandma and Grandpa give you some cash, yeah. bring it down to First Federal and open up a checking account, uh, minimum $50, and uh, you can be all set up with a debit card. Get your card and everything, right? Yeah. Well, so we're going to have the chip card coming out soon trying to keep up with the times exactly uh, and new if you want more information on that as a student uh, they uh, go on down and our uh, representative can explain about the features and requirements and any maintenance fees minimum of what fifty dollars fifty dollars okay yeah. First Federal is FDIC insured and an equal housing lender, and our NMLS number is 3999927. That's the one. We got it. So, okay, Jim Snyder, been with First Federal 39 years. What, what did you do, if anything, before you came to work for us? Before I came to work for you? Well, I actually worked in Peru for three years at uh, Peru Federal Savings and Loan. It's no longer there, but uh, uh, that's where I started. And, uh, and one of your, the guy that hired you was at your open house yesterday. That's correct. Dal Metzger. <laughs> Dal Metzger was my first boss at, at Peru Federal, and, and I was really tickled to see him, and, and he came up. We've, we've maintained over the years, you know, uh, a friendship. But Dal was down there. I think Dal said he was at uh, Peru. Of course, they, they changed over a couple of different banks in between, and Dal stayed on uh, about 37 years is what he was with them. Yeah. But... Uh, it was good to see him. All right, you graduated from Indiana State. That's correct, back and, in 1971. And you got a master's in finance from where? Ball State. All State. Okay. Ball State. See, he's qualified. Yes, he is. Now, That's you right. know why I got, I mean, why it was Ball State? I never thought I'd go. No, Grissom. Remember, they had the Ball State program at Grissom, and I could go ah. down there. And I was able to pick up all that there. And, uh, and actually, through the generosity of First Federal, they encouraged us to do that and they helped out with that. So I really appreciate that. So we got uh, a Indiana State grad, a, a, a master's in finance, and three years' experience, and a nice young wife. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Who was originally from Rochester. Okay. I can remember before that Dick gave me the offer, he had both of us in his office and he asked Connie, he says, now you're sure you want to come back to Rochester, you know, <laughs> that's okay with you. And you were living in Peru at the time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's where we're at. I said that. I said that. Well, yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. You interviewed with Connie to me. And you know what I always thought, because you, you've always said, Dick, it, you can't put a square peg in a round hole and you want to make sure it's going to fit, you that's know. Right. And uh, that, that was your philosophy and you went along with it. Well, I'm, I'm sure back then I asked some questions uh, of which you can't answer. A ask out of <laughs> Probably. But uh, well, that was uh, good. Good for uh, First Federal and, and good personally for me, Jim. And I really appreciate all the dedicated time and effort you you put in uh, with uh, us and the rest of the First Federal. All right, now, you, 39 years ago, when you came to First Federal and into our new building, how many people were there? Nine. <laughs> Nine people. You know, and I, I sit back and I just think of that and I look at that and I, there was only, of course, I think more towards the loan department since I've been there for 39 years, one person in the loan department. I, and I'd say more than one. We, we had uh, Garland Masters of Bath. You know, he would he was always in there checking things out right. and making sure, but Joanne Callahan, and I, and I told him yesterday at the meeting, and I, I still think about that, you know, you talk about wearing a lot of different hats, Joanne took the application, processed the loan, underwrote the loan, put the closing documents together, and closed the loan. <laughs> That's right, and uh, for many years, you could ask her the loan number of Oh, <laughs> Scott Sager, and she'd tell you. She knew it. She knew it. it up. 
Oh yeah, that's one one oh two. Sure. That's back when we nimmed them, uh, numbered them in sequence, and didn't have any of these fancy right. things in right. front and behind and all that. So, but she but she knew all of our customers too. I right. mean, I I I sometimes I know the face, and maybe you hadn't seen them for a while, and they come in and go, Jim, I. And I'd act like, yeah, yeah, and then I would sneak into her office, okay, Joanne, who am I talking to? And Joanne instantly knew sure. who it was. Sure. Yeah. yeah, she was a great, great asset mm -hmm. to, to First Federal and uh, spent many, many years with us. And yeah. So back then, tell us a little bit about the mortgage loan application form compared with today. Oh, I don't know that you want me to even go into that. I mean, it is uh, back then. Quite honestly, a customer could understand what they were getting. You you had a simple application that that took the uh, information that we needed. You could take an application, Dick, and be done with the application easily within a half an hour, if not less. Uh, and you didn't have all of the different documents that you have to go through now, uh, of which are are confusing. Quite honestly, you know they are so. Uh, Time-wise, you could take the application, like I say, in a half an hour today, you're probably good at an hour and a half to two hours. And that doesn't count all of the additional stuff that you have to send ahead and have signed before you can even consider the application started. But, but see, the government passed all these regulations to make things simpler. Well, don't you remember the Paper Reduction Act? Uh, I remember the, that. There was a Paper Reduction Act, yes, if I remember right. Yeah. All right, prior to the Paper Reduction Act, <laughs> you probably only had three or four forms of application. Right. Today, I guarantee you have at least 40. Right. And at closing, you got at least 40 or 50. Yeah. Yeah. So. See, one of our guys counted up how many signatures there are on a loan paper now. Do you remember? What oh, that I was? don't remember what that it's was. Like but it's like 40 There are a bunch easily. of them. Easily. Yeah. Well, easily. nobody ever reads all that stuff. No, again. they don't. We, they we just kind of slide them in yeah. and out. Yeah. Well, kind of what the, the originator said the other day, you know, when they close the loan, you know, by the time they get to that point of the TRID, which is the new closing statement that they just went out with last October, they started with, by the time they get to that, they just say, where do we sign? <laughs> because they are they've so inundated with all the other things. Exactly. So, and it, it's a shame because they used to understand the truth in lending. They used to always complain about the APR. You know, what's the APR? Well, right. the APR was just simply the interest you're paying because you had to pay me some money up front. Right. You know, but you're paying on the, on the full loan amount. But in either case, it was a lot easier to understand. And today, quite honestly, it's not. Well, the criteria have changed for a loan too. Oh. Collateral criteria. I mean, it used to be uh, based on collateral, and now it's not. Yeah, it, they've went away from that, you know. That, but on but on the other hand, too, they basically, with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's come in and limited. They said, well, they're telling you, if your debt to income's over forty three percent, you're not capable of handling that payment, so right. you shouldn't get that loan. Right. And and. Again, I can show you many, many people we've loaned to over 43% because the well can handle their, mm -hmm. their their funds. And I probably shouldn't say this over radio, but I, think, <laughs> I don't know where the government with their current debt load can talk to us about determining how somebody's <laughs> able to pay their bills. That's a pretty good point. Good point. It's yeah. okay, Jim. Talk about <laughs> I'm retired now, so, so I shouldn't retired. be able to get them you, you can't lose your job. You yeah. can't hurt anybody. Go for it. We're speaking this morning to Jim Snyder, uh, who's uh, been the executive vice president of our loan department for many years, and uh, made lots and lots of loans. Uh, all, of, most of which are all were good. Yeah, they were. They were all like we said. They were all good at the time of the application. Okay, go go back 38 years, oh, Jim, okay. and uh, <laughs> tell us uh, the uh, about the mortgage. What was offered at that time, as far as terms and length of time? And, Okay, if we go way back then, it was the 25-year uh, fixed, I think. We talk about a 30-year, but I think it was 25-year was the maximum term on those. A fixed-rate mortgage, I have no idea what the rates were back then, Dick. That's been too long ago, but uh, that was basically it. You, you had the simple fixed rate. I don't know that we had really gotten into adjustables yet. I don't, I don't well, think no, they were there. No, no. we had not. They can't. hadn't even thought about those yet. That came after the 80, yeah, 80s yeah. crunch uh, that they allowed us to make adjustables. Yeah. And uh, no, back then it was, uh, 
20 and 25 year fixed mm -hmm. period. That was it. That was it. Was there a change in lending practices after First Federal went from being a savings and loan to becoming a bank? Or did oh, I don't, just I, transition I don't, pretty smoothly? I think it was pretty smooth. I don't. There was not a big difference because actually when I came into the bank deck, well, no, that was, I can't remember when we had the change on that. Was that when the stock and when you switched over? Yeah, Is that when it went so, to yeah. the, the bank from savings yeah. and loan? Mm -hmm. That's what I was okay. thinking. So, no, I don't know that there was any, not that I'm aware no, of, Dick it, might be, but. It was a little um, more liberal on lending with the, as a bank. Uh, but still, we had, we still had the restrictions of uh, a percentage of okay. our mortgages that they had to be for homes, mm -hmm. and that's in our charter. That's but if, but if I remember right, we had that restriction because we also had a break on the rates. Wasn't it? Uh, uh, what were we able to do on the rates, Dick? You're talking about mortgage rates. Yeah. Well, no, not on the mortgage rates, but um, on the savings or something that we were given a break because yeah. of our. Lending well, that's right. Yeah, they uh, at, at that time a savings bank uh, rates were all set by the government. Okay, and like uh, past books would be four percent for commercial banks and four and a quarter for uh, non-commercial for savings banks. Okay, that make any sense? No, but. But it was encouraging. You know, it was, sure. it was for years, and then credit unions were in the play also. Right. So, uh, you know, it's just in 39 years there have been so many changes. And, uh, for young people today, Jim, that would like to uh, or are considering a mortgage, what kind of advice would you give them in terms of what they're going to have to have when they come to the bank? What they're going to have to have when they come to the bank? Well. Uh, we've got regulations now on what's considered an application, so your originator is going to let them know what all they okay. need. But if they come to the bank, you know, th they need to be able to show their income, okay. you know. And I think on the bank, you can't request any of this, you know. You can give a card out on the back of the card and say, you know, this would be good to have at the time of the application. <laughs> right. But you, you need to have your pay stubs, right. you need to have your bank statements, you know. Uh, any, any work history, you'll be signing a thing to go ahead and give your credit authorization. Uh, the nice thing about it now, you've got so many programs for those first time home buyers exactly. out there. I mean, they can borrow up to 97% and the other 3% can be gifted now, right. you know, through the programs that we've got. So they're, they're out there and they're available. Uh, secondary market has some really good home programs out there that are set up the same way, call their home possible, that they can run through on that. So. Uh, Got a lot of a lot of nice programs out there. For them. Okay, job stability. Yes. yes, is a big thing. Okay, uh, if you've uh, changed th jobs three times in the last three years, you're not a very good risk. Debt. Debt. If they owe a lot of money, it's going to be tough to get debt a mortgage. Debt to income ratio. Yeah, your debt to you should, That's what I was saying. Right. That's exactly. out there forty three percent. In right. in reference to what Dick said, yeah. If they switch jobs, they and improve themselves and stayed within the same line, then they're okay. But normally, job hopping, you know, you would question why they're going from here. But there's sometimes when they've just gotten out of college, maybe got that first job, you know, and then a year later, hey, something else comes up more within their field, and they go to that. As long as they're, it's a trend. You kind of have to look at the trend. If it's on that. With the younger people, is home ownership still part of the American dream? Yes. Okay. Uh, it went away a little bit uh, in, uh, during the recession, and uh, especially uh, when college graduates were gradu graduating, couldn't find a job. Right. They went back to live with mom and dad. And still are to a degree. Yeah, but not as much. Right. Yeah, because the uh, jobs are out there. And uh, I'm a strong, strong believer in uh, the American dream of home ownership, and it still is. Uh, really a motivating thing. We see young couples coming in all the time and smile on their face and they, they've found the, prop, the property that they want and one that they can afford and that's uh, the American way. Exactly. A lot of them, you know, it's education too and the fact they, they uh, question whether they can afford it. Right. And they, they haven't and, and they need to be aware, yeah, they can. I mean, if they, like you say, if they meet all those things, they've made their payments, their credit, and their history, they can afford them now. You know, they worry about, do I have enough money back, or I won't be able to afford it. 
Is our key question still, what's my monthly payment going to be? Oh, yeah. yeah you, know, they, 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 you always want to know what the monthly payment is. What is that going to be? No doubt month? about that. <laughs> yeah, that's a key thing. And I'd make this statement over the years, uh, First Federals all, always tried never to get our people over in debt, something that uh, they can't handle, and uh, that's, that's not what we want because that that just doesn't fly. Uh, it, it's it's not, not good for anybody. It's not good for anybody. It's not good for them. It's not good for us. We've always, I mean, like we, we kind of laughed. We said we always made a good loan. But we, we can go out of that feeling that we always did what we thought was best for the customer at that time. Uh, you know, not only, I mean, yeah, we had to look at First Federal too, but that's always been a main concern of ours. We want to make sure that we give good customer service. And I think you can say that's the reason we went from nine employees to 71 when I retired yesterday just at our office. Good way to do business. Yeah. Well, Jim, uh, yesterday we had a uh, little reception for you and uh, I understand the parking lot was overwhelmed <laughs> and uh, we had you had hundreds of people there and I think that just speaks wonders, wonderful things for you and the way you treated uh, our community and been involved in so many things in the community like like hospice and uh, uh, Habitat for Humanity and a lot of other things. Well, I, I, I pre we, we appreciate the, the community kind of and I were blessed to be able to have to raise our kids in Rochester, you know, and I was blessed to be able to work for the guy I'm sitting across from. <laughs> Great. Uh, and the feel, feelings mutual, yeah. thank you. You've been a great asset to uh, First Federal and I appreciate that very much. Okay, enough with that. Okay. We're moving right along we are. with uh, the trivia this morning is, uh, did you know that Congress passed a law in year 2000 that calls on Americans to pause for a moment of remembrance on Memorial Day? That time of the day is supposed to happen. Is it 11 a.m., 3 p.m., or 5? It's a tough one. It is. It's, a, it's 11 a.m. on uh, Veterans it's, Day in it's November. It's 11, 11, 11. Yeah, it's Veterans right, Day, Memorial right. Day. I don't know. 11 a.m. is my guess. All right, 5 p.m. No, no. Yeah. 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, okay. Yeah, all right. I was thinking 3 o'clock. Right. Yeah. Well, see, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll give you credit on that one, Jim. We'll give you that one. I was going to say. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, remember, Memorial Day used to always be on the 30th. Right. And that's been changed. It was called Decoration Day back then. It's called Decoration Day. Back in the old days. And yeah. uh, the, the race was always run on Memorial Day. That's right. Except when it was on Sunday. Right. They didn't run it on Sunday. Nope. Mm -hmm. It's against the law. Right. Blue law. Yep. Can't do it. People out there say, what is he talking about? <laughs> Why do I want what to know this? What is he talking about? <laughs> well, it's true. Okay. All right, and then we had the second trivia. Yeah, we had another was, one. Was uh, how many loan committee minutes has Jim Snyder sat through in 39 years? Wow. Well, was it 1,000, 2,000, or 3,000? Yeah. 2,000? What do you think? Scott and I think 2,000. Wrong. Uh oh. More than 3,000. Really? Wow. Yeah. And, and in most of them, he was awake. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, let's close with this statement by Abe Lemons. Now, we talked about who Abe yeah. Lemons is. He's a former basketball coach at Oklahoma, at, uh, Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City University, University at that yeah. time, right. And he says, Jim, this is for you. Oh, oh, okay. Abe Lemons says, the trouble with retirement is you never get a day off. Okay. <laughs> well said. Dick Belcher, thank you very much. Jim Snyder, thank you very much. Thank Scotty, you. as always, nice to have you in the studio today on the First Federal Program. Buying your first home? Let the experts at First Federal Savings Bank help you through the process. At First Federal, all of their mortgage loans are serviced locally with payment options that are convenient for you. Their staff will work with you answering your questions and providing professional service. First Federal will even pay standard closing costs for qualifying first-time home buyers. Just another way, First Federal takes care of you, your local mortgage lender.